patching going over today. All right, it says live, but the circle's on. Everything look good? Action yeah. needed. Uh oh. All right. We're live. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is 6.02. I was actually here at 6.01. I just took a minute to get the live thing. So I'm really getting better on time. I'm working on it. So I hope uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If somebody would, could do me a favor and just write a comment to let me know we're coming through. Annie, thank you so much. <laughs> that uh, Someone uh, chiming in, let us know we're okay. Annie, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so this is our second session today. Uh, we, we were on uh, earlier at uh, 12 this afternoon. We had really some really good conversation, really good topics. Uh, but uh, I appreciate all of you that, that are able to take a little bit of time and spend with me this evening. Um, so uh, again, one of the reasons we do these sessions is just to interaction, be open and transparent and talk to the community about issues that they may want to ask me or in anything that, that I can do, uh, suggestions and ideas. There's some things that I'm, I, I certainly want to talk about and touch base on. One is our, our memorial service tomorrow. We'll talk about that a little later. I want to tell you, I'm going to do my very best to stay up on all of the uh, messages that come through. I will probably miss one. Uh, if it's a lot, very interactive, and I hope it is, uh, I will just be scrolling back to, to pick some of those up. Um, but if I do miss one, and it's not my intent, please charge it to my heart, not, not, not my, uh, not my head. I, I, I did not mean to, and, and having these conversations, I think, are very important. Um, I'm learning to do better and better talking into this little blue light, um, but I enjoy my time uh, interacting with you all, the citizens of this community. So I'll do the very best I can to address each question as thorough as I can, and if I don't know, I will be open and tell you I don't know. And, if there's something I can't talk about in a particular case, um, I'll be glad to, to uh, share that with you, just being open that, that I can't go down too far into the case to jeopardize anything. So with that said, let me just kind of take a look here. Robin, thank you for being here. Angela, uh, oh, sounding good. Angela, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Cox, thanks for being here. Uh, you were here earlier today. I, I appreciate that. Like I said, we'll be reaching out and asking you to help us with our, our uh, next promotional process. Uh, with our sergeants that, that are coming up and going through Candace, um, my five-year-old says hi and he loves the police. Well, I will tell you, Candace, uh, that is so cool. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Wyatt, so if uh, let me know if Wyatt's uh, if he's on, and I will uh, I will address Wyatt personally. So if you can get Wyatt with you to log on, you send me a, a thing here. I think we do that right. If he if he tells us he's there, mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll address Wyatt myself. So. That's great. Deborah, thank you for being here in the Stokes. I appreciate that. Ashley, um, are there plans to increase traffic control in the Hilton area? The speeding red light runners, et cetera, is out of control. I see the, the speed box out, which is a step, but more enforcement is needed for physical officers passing out tickets. More enforcement is needed for physical officers. And I'm gonna come right back to you, Ashley. I won't forget you. And uh, uh, Mr. Davis, hello, my friend. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Ashley, um, I will tell you, we have a traffic division. We have six officers assigned to our traffic division. But right now I've had to absorb them in patrol because of some of the shortage we're experiencing. Now, we have two academies going on, but I've got, I do have officers, um, uh, canine and traffic, embedded in our patrol right now to help us with calls for service and, and addressing issues in our community. Um, I have gotten, there's two locations. Uh, one is around the Killing Creek area, uh, and one is in the Hilton area with speeders. So. Um, we're trying to come up with some creative ways, but right now I've had to look, kind of look and assess what we have and where, where do I need to deploy. We're always going to focus more on our violent crime issues. Um, so we talked to our captains about when we have some, some uh, extra officers, we talked about doing some overtime in some of the areas specifically, right, about the time of day. So any, anything that we can be more precise. So when you say, or when someone says, hey, they're, they're speeding in this hundred block of Jefferson Avenue, what I'm going to ask is, is there a particular time that you see it? Um, can you narrow it down four or five hours uh, to help us? Uh, but we also are going to be driven by data. So where are we seeing our, our majority of accidents and crashes? Those are areas that we're going to focus on first. And I get, right, well, there, there's kids here and we don't want to see accidents here. I, I totally get it. 
Um, but I, right, right now, we're, we, with some of the vacancies we have, there's some differences we've had to look at our patrol structure and have some things embedded. So the more help you can give me about times and, and the better. Um, but right now, we're, we're sending those complaints to our precinct cabinets and asking them to address it uh, the best we can. So I, I totally hear you. Um, I will tell you, I get two, I, I will get a call about, we want to see officers do more traffic enforcement. And then the next call is, why are you doing so much traffic enforcement during uh, this COVID situation that's going on and putting people at risk for coming close to con So I have to balance that. I don't want to see anyone get hurt. Um, but it's really about being strategic. I, I don't have the luxury right now of having put two officers here to address traffic. I just don't have that right now. I'm not saying it's not important, but I've got to prioritize some of the, the way we staff and uh, making sure that I've got uh, staffing adequate when we get our, our high priority calls. Um, so I appreciate you bringing it up. That, that is the two locations I have on my desk to address, one in the north and then again uh, Hilton uh, down here. Uh, so. I, I appreciate it, and uh, anything you can refine for me, I it would be great. Um, Deborah, I have a question for you. My daughter is in the eighth grade and was told her, wait, and was told hate speech and racial slurs are freedom of speech by a teacher. How do you think I can address this? I think you talk to the teacher in the school, um, you know, without knowing what was said, and, and, and I certainly don't want it. But I, I, I was actually in a meeting this morning with the mayor, and we had a round table, and I had uh, my, my friend Rashad Wright. I had. Uh, uh, Kelly Mate, Dr. Mason, uh, president of uh, Warwick uh, High School, and then actually a student from um, uh, Heritage High School. And we just had some really good conversation. I think be open and honest and, and just have some conversation with maybe the teacher, the principal. Start there. Um, but I, I will tell you, uh, and I, you know, I don't know what was said, but, um, you know, it, it, you take it can be taken out of context. So it's really hard, Deborah. I, I you know, I, I I hope it wasn't offensive, and, and you know, but I I would start with um, giving the first black at it by sitting down and just talking with the teacher of some concerns and hate speech. What do you mean? What 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 are you saying? And and do we have freedom of speech? But um, have it looked upon and just just have some conversation. Yeah, just have some. I wouldn't do it through email. I would face to face have this conversation. So just be. I think so much can be addressed by just open communication. You don't always have to agree, but open communication, I think, is the best way to handle uh, when you get emails back and forth, what is your tone? Uh, I would sit down and have a conversation with the, with the teacher. James, that's a great question, Bill. Thank you for sharing that with me. Uh, James, do you still have motormen? I haven't seen any in a while. We do, but I have them embedded in patrol, and right now the top priority is answering our calls for service. So we do still have officers who, who ride motorcycles, but when we have the free time to do that. Right now, our priority is answering calls for service and making sure that those calls are, are received. The citizens, whether it's a, a burglary or uh, some type of assault, a, a situation that's happened, um, I need to make sure we have officers in our neighborhoods to address the violent, violent crime issues we have. Uh, but yes, they are still there and, and they're not going anywhere. I just, I just got the academy graduates in November, so I think we'll get some relief there. Uh, actually, they graduate the day before Thanksgiving, so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I drove here today, people were flying by. Yep, I understand. Um, hello, do you have a cyber stalking harass? Wait. Do you have a cyber stalking harassment unit? No. We have uh, detectives who can address those type of situations, but I don't have a cyber stalking uh, harassment unit. Cyber stalking. Cyber stalking. Um, Lynn, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Look, it's, a, it's a great profession. There's a lot of challenges right now. It's a challenging time in law enforcement. Uh, uh, individuals may leave because uh, this isn't for them. They may leave because of the climate. Um, didn't realize it was all this. Didn't realize you had to spend so much time and things that you miss. It's a, it's a 24 hour operation, right? You don't go home at 5 o'clock and just see everybody again at 9 in the morning. Um, you miss a lot of things. You stay over. You have court on your days off, you're here on the weekends if there's a, an, an event that we have to staff. So it is hard, but I think that's what makes it so special. And the challenging times we're in, I, I think that that allows us to be at our very best. Um, we make mistakes. Um, but I'll tell you, as I said earlier today, I'm not sitting on the sidelines and just complaining. We're here trying to make things better and doing the best we can. Will we make mistakes? All of us are imperfect. So obviously in this profession, 
If we have individuals, all of us, myself included, I'll put myself at the front of the list, right, that, that are imperfect, we're going to make mistakes. It's that we do our very best to address it, change it, and move forward. People join this profession to help people. Um, and that's the try, type of family I try to run here, the type of culture I try to establish. Um, that our citizens come first and do our very best to, to work with them. Um, challenging times, right, with COVID and, and, and uncertainty about things and, and paychecks and jobs. And so I understand those stresses. We all have them. Um, we just do the best we can to move forward. But we're all in this together, and I, that's why I think I go back to uh, being able to sit down and have conversations and talk to each other really makes a big difference. Uh, so, Len, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Ashley. Uh, oh, shipyard times, 5, a, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and 2.34. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, is it Katie? Hayes. Uh, strange occurrence yesterday on 65th Street. Three men in three different vehicles, theft and armed, and armed, not in police uniforms altogether, overlooking something on the hood of the car. Any insight? No, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, without knowing the in incident or situation, three men in vehicle vests and, an, and armed, not in police uniform, all together overlooking something on the hood of one car in the inside. No, um, um, we do have officers that wear plain clothes, but there should be a, uh, a badge hanging around their neck or a placard or an outer carrier vest. So I'm not, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what, what, that, what that was on 65th Street. Right? Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, if uh, if you send me a time frame, I, I may be able to look it up and see, but I just I, I don't know. Lynn, hard times. Got Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. Eddie, how long do unsolved homicides stay open? What is the protocol when officers leave? What happens to the open cases? It's a great question. Um, that's a really good question. So, a homicide case stays open until it's solved. Um, we certainly have individuals who retire. We have individuals that are promoted, we have individuals that may, may want another assignment or another opportunity. That's, uh, that's one of the hardest divisions, that and special victims. It's a very, very hard division to stay in. Um, we spend a lot of time training and we want to keep good talent there, but I understand. Um, my past life, I, I was the uh, captain of the homicide division in the, my last agency, and it, I mean, you just bond with, with, with the community and, and family members who've lost loved ones. Um, so it's hard, um, but but the the, it, the the cases are not closed and until they're solved. So um, if I have uh, three or four cases that are unsolved and I retire, or promote it, or transfer, um, the new detective coming in would, uh, would get those cases, or they may be dispersed out to other detectives that are there, put some fresh eyes on it, and see if there's anything new. Um, there's some cases that. Uh, have a pretty good idea who, who committed the, the murder, but unless this piece of evidence comes through, we're not going to be able to prosecute it. Uh, we share, we meet with the Commonwealth attorneys and share that, and, and then they will, uh, they and the detectives, right, talking, work together that we know this individual saw the, the, the incident, but if this individual is not willing to testify, we need something else, and until we have that, we're kind of stagnant. And things happen, right? Sometimes other people get arrested and say they heard something, someone ends up showing something, someone gets mad at someone and tells them that. Uh, so there may be something with DNA evidence that evolves in two or three years or four years. Uh, so there's a lot of factors that can change things. Um, but yeah, it, 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 they, are, they are open until they are closed, until, 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 they're, until there's a finality. Um, that, that was a great question. Annie, um, is it illegal to flash your lights to an oncoming car that is speeding if you know there is no police ahead? Just to make the other person feel down. Not that I have that over the smile it takes. Uh, no, it's not. It's not illegal. You know, um, sometimes people. Sometimes people will do that um, if someone's driving. They don't have their headlights on. Uh, if they're going too fast, sometimes people will do it. And just quite frankly, sometimes people do it to let others, other cars that are driving, know that the police are in the area, right? So any of those things, you're just trying to work someone. Um, now driving at night uh, with bright lights on is a little something different. I don't know that you got to get a ticket for that. Uh, but it could cause some blind spots and have people blind their eyes a little bit when they're driving. So you may get stopped and, and just, did you know your, 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 your uh, highlights, your, your bright lights are on? But it, no, I don't have a problem with uh, flicking and, and, and letting someone know that, you know, if they slow down or the police are around the corner or whatever, um, 
police are running late or, or you're speeding or you don't have your lights on at night. That's usually what I see most of, most of the time. Uh, Kellyanne, you're doing a wonderful job. What, are we do what can we do as civilians to help? Do you have any volunteer positions? Kellyanne, we absolutely do. Um, Anna Whalen and Monica White both work with a lot of uh, citizen volunteers. Um, if that's something you're interested in, we have all kinds of things, uh, places that we, you know, we try to assess who's wanting to work with us. If we have someone who might be accountant, we might want them to look at, at some things, economic crimes. If we have individuals that, hey, we want to come out and pass out water, we want to walk with you and do community walks in the community and the neighborhoods. Um, uh, so yes, we have all kinds of volunteer positions. Uh, we have a, a Citizens Academy. I would love to see people, more people take a part of it. There's probably about 500 that have gone through it all together. Um, they have an alumni uh, an academy. Those are the individuals that I use for our use of force review board. Um, but yes, we absolutely have opportunities. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know. Um, you send us a message and I can have uh, one of the individuals who work in that area to shoot you a call and just have some conversation. Okay. Let me go up a little bit here. Yeah. There you go. Um, Deborah, have a blessed evening. Oh, De Deborah, thank you. Thank, thanks for the conversation. You know, good, good information. Thank you. Anna, Anna, Anna. Uh, good evening, Chief. Everything is set, everything is set for tomorrow. Looks good, and I hope the Newport News citizens will come to the police memorial tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Calvary Chapel on. Fi nope, got to scroll back up. Yep. One. Yep. On 15 553 Warwick Boulevard. So, Miss Whalen uh, works a great deal with volunteers. We have. Um, Citizens Alumni Academy, and what she's referring to tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, at Calvary Chapel on 15553, so 15553 Warwick Boulevard, north of Denby on Warwick. If you're going north on the left-hand side, Calvary Chapel Church. Uh, pastor Tony, uh, just an excellent, excellent pastor. Uh, the church has really wrapped their arms around the community, youth, relationships with the police department, uh, doing things together bridging the gaps that we have. We're going to hold our memorial service. Um, so we're going to hold a little bit here. Um, and I, I will tell you, um, this weekend, uh, Friday uh, afternoon, myself and Chief, Chief Grinstead went to Washington, D.C. Uh, this was police week. They had the national uh, monument there and national service, memorial service for police officers who've given their lives in the line of duty. So Friday, we got to go to the uh, National Monument and see names carved in a wall. Uh, our most recent was Officer Katie Thine. Um, so we saw her name. Uh, we went to, uh, that. so that was, uh, Friday night was the, um, let me show you it right. Thursday night was the candlelight vigil. Friday night, we got to see the memorial. Saturday was the actual service, wreath laying ceremony, escorting family members up. Um, that took place on the Capitol, Capitol lawn. And then uh, Saturday night, each honor guard uh, that, that participated stood and guarded the monument for 10 minutes. Uh, our guys selected the time, right? You, you draw the time, and they, they, they were given 11.40 p.m. Not a.m., p.m. So myself and Chief Prince had met them there. Uh, they stood guard of the monument in Washington, D.C. for 10 minutes, and then they were relieved by another another department and then they closed down and got to see the bagpipes play uh, taps and amazing grace and I'll tell you it's very humble very humble um, going back to uh, Saturday afternoon the memorial service our guards from across the country lined up and family members who had lost loved ones walked through that and I'll tell you it was humbling if you picture a tour bus with maybe 50 60 people on it and you just see them continue to roll in. Bus number three, number four, number 12, bus number 15, bus number 18. And you see family members walk through uh, uh, on, on, on both sides, a column of officers uh, to come in. And the line would stop, and, and it was diverse, right? Um, even even uh, I got a fist bump from a young, young boy. Um, mother stopped and hugged me. Um, from Las Vegas, I got to actually, uh, her escort was late, so I escorted her part of the way. Um, it was just very humbling, and um, I could not be more proud of our honor guard, how they, how they displayed and represented this city and, and this department. Um, but I also cannot be more prou proud of the men and women 
who are in this profession stick with it. We stay with it. It's hard. Um, so tomorrow at 10 a.m. we will honor those that gave their life serving this city, this community. Those that didn't stand on the sidelines and complain, point out everything that's wrong. Those that serve. And for some, they paid the ultimate price for that. I believe wholeheartedly they would still do it again today. Uh, but it was important that we recognize them. It was important that we set a day aside to show our support for them. Um, and I'll tell you, I've got a couple surprises tomorrow. So uh, if you don't get to see it, you'll certainly hear about it. And when you hear about it, you're going to wish you were there. So I'm asking, uh, I'm inviting all of our citizens in Newport News to come out tomorrow at 10 a.m. The service will be about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, at Calvary Chapel in the, the 15,000 block of Ward Boulevard. Uh, pastor Tony is going to be the guest speaker, he's the pastor of the church, and uh, he's just phenomenal. And um, yeah, it is fitting uh, that we show our respect to those who died in the line of duty serving this community. It may, may matter. Um, definitely had a plaque on the, oh, plaque, yeah. So it, it could have been some of the narcotic officers, could have been some of the federal agent partners that we work with. I just don't know, uh, uh, Kate, I just don't know what the, what the situation is. Uh, Carrie, Chief, appreciate all you do when possible. Can the officers patrol Hyden Boulevard near two very bad accidents? Yep, Carrie, I, I will tell you, um, I, I get it on the, on the traffic stuff. Um, it's something we send, when we get the complaints, we send them to the captains. But I, I will also, um, just letting you know that we are, we do have some shortages until that academy gets out. We're hurt. Uh, or, I don't know if hurting is the right word, but we're short. And we really got to focus on those high priority calls. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, we did buy some speed trailers, so we try to use them. Now, some people like that. But some people say, no, they don't work at all, Chief. So, but again, we're trying. Um, but I, right now, the traffic division, I have absorbed back into patrol to make sure that officers are safe and that we're able to respond to some of those high priority calls. But your, your information is not going, and I'm not saying we're not doing it. I'm just, I, 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 you're not going to see the, the 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 presence that I would like to have there um, right away. And I'm just I'm just being open and honest and transparent with you about what we're what it's coming. But I'm just about a few weeks behind on on having some of those uh, newer officers on the street. Um, well, I would never want anyone that officers are ahead. Andy, that's all right. You know, look, sometimes I would rather citizens slow other citizens down than an officer having to do it with the you flip your, your lights once or twice. That's better than red and blue lights flipping, right? Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Veronica, um, what I missed? Hey, oh, Veronica's <laughs> just saying hello. Veronica, well, I'm glad you're here. Keith, wish I had a little more advance notice on the moral service. I definitely would have come. Really appreciated you inviting us last year. It was impressive service. Keith, I appreciate that. You'll be there in spirit, my friend. Um, you're good, uh, very supportive, and I appreciate you, appreciate everything you do, and please, please, please be, be safe where you're at, my friend. Uh, Melissa, th Melissa, thank you for being there. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, how do you say that name? Morgan. 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 Thank you for being there. Morgan, where are you from? Are you here in Newport News or, or somewhere else? I, I, thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Annie, thank you. It means a lot. Thank you. Um, Ms. Rain, uh, how was that question? What is the protocol in cases of transfer? Are the victim's families notified when the transfer of the case happens? I haven't heard from the officer on the death of my husband in about six months. I've reached out to no avail. Um, yeah, so Ms. Rain, if you want to message us uh, and let me know, uh, give us a contact number. Um, you can just give me the name of your, your husband. But the uh, protocol is that they would notify that I'm the new detective in charge of this case. But I, I, I do, one of the things I tried to preface earlier is that if we don't get, uh, if there's nothing new, you know, I like the detectives to, to reach back out and at some point, you know, hey, I'm just touching base, there isn't anything new, we haven't had any new information, no, no new developments, but, um, but, but, but on that, um, yeah, if you haven't talked to anyone, um, and, and I will tell you, sometimes we get families that will call and say, I haven't talked to the detective, I haven't heard anything, I haven't heard anything, but, uh, we try to really stay in contact with one family member from each family. So sometimes we'll get a, a two or three siblings that call and we're like, no, no, we talked to so-and-so just two days ago, and well, you didn't talk to me, and, and I, I totally understand that. So if, if it's something about uh, update, you send me a, um, 
a number, and I'll, I'll make sure that you get a call, uh, if not tomorrow, this week, okay? So I, I totally understand that. But, yeah, if there's a, tra a, a transfer over, um, they should be reaching out to the family. Uh, Morgan, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Annie, I'm seeing the heart emojis. What's the other emoji thing? What is that little guy? It's like a little, like uh -huh. a baby angel. Or? Is that? Uh, <laughs> it's like an angel. Yeah, angel. Yeah. So from some of us that are older, Annie, I got either got to have my glasses or the emojis got to be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I wish, uh, Annie, I wish I could. I'll be okay. That's fine. Perfect. Alvin, there is no greater love than late. Wow. Um, so uh, Dr. Lyons uh, is quote, quoting there from the Bible, and I. I couldn't agree more. Um, Dr. Lyons is a big partner with the police department and working with us on our community relations and, and just how we interact with citizens and building bridges between the community and the police department. And we had a lot of conversations about leadership and about caring for one another and how, how we interact, how we treat um, suspects, how we treat victims, how we keep communities in, informed and doing the best we can. And, and I'll tell you, um, there's going to be times that we don't. There's going to be someone that doesn't get a call or some, something that we miss. It's not intentional. It's not intentional, but those things happen. And um, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in communication. I like face-to-face -face a lot better than a phone call or, or email and, and things like that. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, as I was saying earlier, we're, we're going to make mistakes. I think we're better today than we were yesterday. I think we'll be better tomorrow than we were today. We're trying to do things different and evolve. What is the next best thing? How do we work this better? That's why we've got domestic violence advocates in our department. That's why we hired our own social workers after they were trained by human services to come here and work in the evening hours when we, we need them sometimes after 5 o'clock. That's why we pr provided the, uh, the CARES team, uh, which is our paramedics and our clinicians that respond to mental illness calls. They're, you know, they're responding to about 30 calls a day. I had no idea. I knew that, you know, I know there's calls around mental illness, but 30 calls a day that they're responding to. We have two teams out there. I think we're going to expand on that. Uh, it's just overwhelming. Um, we have, uh, and, and, and for the things that we see, the things that I don't think some people were, were ever meant to see, but when we see them, the death of a child, or a tragic accident, a homicide, or a bad assault, or a bad domestic, it's in our head. And here's the thing. After that paperwork is done, the officers go to the next call. They go to the next thing. And whatever they deal with there, then they go to the next. So you could go to a, a traffic fatality. You could go to someone making a report on a burglary. You could do a traffic stop. Come back on, on some type of assault or something stolen. And th th that's, a, that's a lot, right? And, and I, when I started 20 years ago, I'm not dating myself, but when I started 20 years ago, we didn't really talk about the stress of the job and and how it affected us, but I, I, I try to create a culture and atmosphere here that that's okay, that's normal. Uh, we have a department psychologist, we have a great citizen team that, um, overseen by Captain uh, J.P. Smith and Lieutenant Barefoot. We have a great partnership with our surrounding jurisdiction, Hampton and others. We have some civilians on the uh, fire department, the dispatchers. Um, but we try to look out for one another because mental health matters as well. We do our department physical each year to make sure our heart is working, right? But I also need to make sure that officers are okay here. That they're okay for And I see a lot, so. Carrie, um, understand the shortages. Appreciate it all. St Carrie, thank you so much. Like I said, we got that class graduating. Um, 17 new recruits will graduate in November. Uh, we started the class of 20. We're down to 17. And then we have another class, a smaller class behind them, that started in September. So we'll see them well after the first of the year. And then the big class we're looking for in December. Now, I'm pushing for it to be in December. I'm getting a little pushback internal. They want to start it in January. Uh, I get that, but I, I want officers on the street. I want them trained. Uh, and I know it may be a little extra work and push, uh, but I, and there's some, some timing and some deadlines to get people in the door. Uh, but that, that big class, uh, I'm looking to put 30 in that class in December, the 1st of January, that will really set the tone for us. Um, and it's really going to be a a benchmark for us as we move into the new year. Uh, Jacob, hey Chief Drew, how effective have the increased DUI patrols been on the weekends? Uh, Jacob, I, I think they're doing well. Uh, um, Sergeant Calero does a lot with the DUI patrol, Sergeant Covey as well. Um, you know, people are signing up. I, I think we're seeing some pretty good results. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, it's all about being safe. So we, we put out there that we're going to be doing those. 
Uh, I think on our Facebook page we talked about DUI controls, and that is a, a way to say, hey, look, if you're if you're drinking, um, please Uber, get a friend, a, a dr walk, uh, uh, but just don't drive uh, drunk. It, it, it's you know, I'm not trying to preach anyone. I just um, you know accidents happen. I want people to be safe. Uh, yes, uh, Alexander, Virginia. Grew up in Newport News and Hampton. I miss home. Well, listen, come back, come back. We got room. Uh, but I, I really uh, appreciate appreciate you being here with us tonight. It means a lot, and, and just want to say thank you. Um, yeah, Miss Rains, that's perfect. And uh, like I said, um, I think Andy said it too. I'm very very sorry. I'm not. You know, I forget. I don't want to ever forget. Um, you know, when we talk about homicides and tragic situations, that's a lasting impact on these families. Um, we have a homicide support group here. I think it's important. Uh, where survivors and, and loved ones of victims meet with detectives, right? So they have a one-on-one. -on -one. They meet with the, the captain, the lieutenant, and the sergeants, the detectives who work the cases. Um, they give us advice on better ways that we can help and treat uh, victim, family members of victims, and, and uh, they support one another on how to get through some of the tough times, holidays and birthdays and anniversaries of tough things. But it is a very, very tight group, meaning not that they exclude anyone, but they just care about each other, right? And they have a relationship with police officers and, and those homicide detectives. So if that's something you're interested in, you're so welcome. Um, but I want to make sure we get you a phone call, okay? Thank you, and I appreciate it. Keith. I uh, just got to sit here and listen. I'm not going to ask any questions. I ruined enough of your surprises like the virtual All-Star Day earlier today. <laughs> That's all right. We're looking at that. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I, when I got done, uh, I went upstairs. I had about five people, including two assistant chiefs, like, hey, what's that? So uh, it's okay. It, it, uh, it's okay. Um, but we are looking at some different ways. Some of the lower priority calls that we can handle maybe through Zoom and take a report instead of having an officer actually respond that you can talk to face to face through here and make it a little bit easier uh, for everyone. Uh, so it's all right. All police officers who, who have, all, have... Let me go back up. There you go. All police officers... All police officers who have passed our angels. Oh, wow, Annie, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Lawrence, well, how have you been, Chief? Uh, how are you guys? Yeah, so Lawrence, yeah, I'm good to go back with the ride along program, um, especially those that are applying. I think it's important that they, they interact and, and, and do a little bit. So yeah, the ride along, ride -along program is, is back open. Um, if you're looking to do that and set something up, I'll probably say maybe the first week of November, uh, and make sure that we've got, uh, we've got some recruits and field training and getting ready to be released. So that's going to tie up some, uh, but first week of November, we should be good to go if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, I've been able to attend those meetings. They help. Wow, that's right. Thank you. That means a lot. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Mel called it. Mel mm -hmm. called it. Yep. So well, that's pretty good. I catch my breath. Uh, did I miss miss something for Miss Bradley? No. Yeah. That's so she sent a. She sent a reply to. Uh, yeah, Miss Bradley is a, is a great a great champion of of faith and love. She works a lot with our. Um, just sh passing on love and care to our, our community. She volunteers with a lot. She's mm -hmm. on our use of work. You work great, great. So a couple things I want to touch base on. Um, tomorrow, like I said, at 10 o'clock is our police tomorrow. The community is invited. Miss Rains, um, if you're around, I'd love to see you. Grab me by the shirt. Um, just touch base and talk about it. If you're there, I'd love to see you tomorrow. You're invited. Um, Community's invited, the city's invited. Um, so that's tomorrow at 10 o'clock at Calvary Chapel, right? Um, then we also have a domestic violence um, month going on here in the month of October. Uh, we're, and I don't want to just do one kickoff, right? We had our kickoff uh, out in front of headquarters, um, but we tried to do some things as well. We had a, uh, a walk in, in the South Precinct. We have one in North tomorrow. We are passing out literature about 3.30 in the aqueduct apartment complex, just sharing some information about domestic violence, raising awareness, letting people know that there is help. If people want to call us or talk to us, um, please do. You know, it is very hard to patrol and address domestic violence situations because they have behind closed doors, most often, and behind walls. So we really have to rely on um, reports or 
information that a victim may share with someone. And, and I've learned so much. I will tell you, I've learned so much in the last year, year and a half, uh, about domestic violence, about how important it is that we bond and treat with, that we treat uh, with great respect the victims. Um, but, but uh, like I said, we've done, we've done one walk in the south, we're going to do a walk tomorrow in the north, and we'll do a walk in, in central. And next week, I have a round table with a bunch of high school students. And I want to talk to them about domestic violence and not lecture them. I want to hear what they have to say. You know, sometimes I think we forget that there's a couple, there's the victim of the assault, but there's also the kids who grew up in that home and that are around that. Um, that may withdraw or suffer depression or blame themselves, whatever it might be. But I just kind of like to hear from the young people, the, the, the students. I think that's the best commodity we have in our city is our youth. Um, so we'll be working with our young adult police commissioners and some of the new ones that joined this year. But I just want to sit around in a round table and just ask them, do you hear things at school? Do you see your friends? Do you talk about those things? Um, how does it affect? You know, I'm not trying to prize anyone, but it's, I just want to know how they feel. Um, and I think that's important. Getting their input, I think, is important. Um, if you come by at night, our building is still lit up in purple to represent and, and promote domestic uh, awareness, right? Um, but it's also Breast Cancer Month, and that's why I have this glowing pink badge on, um, uh, talking about promoting bre breast cancer awareness. So there's uh, several officers who chose to, to purchase this badge and wear it for the month. Of, uh, of October, so uh, those are just those are good things that we're, we're trying to address. And Andy, I had to take a break. I was getting a little hoarse, so I had to make a fun of the drink. Andy, just so we know, just so we're clear, because I know it's a hot topic today, it's diet. No, I'm good. I'm let it. No, I'm let it. I'm let it. Diet, no, I'm good. I blow up like a fish, right? <laughs> diet, no, I'm good. Uh, Keep. Uh, if you need a starting point for the virtual officer idea, check out in Rikert County Police. They had a position named the call management officer for a police dog that a low priority call uh, to take the report by phone instead of sending an officer. So Keith, yeah, that's, uh, so first of all, I'm very familiar with in Rikert County. I, I worked about 25 years up in that area, boarding it with Richmond, um, and I know that chief very well. Uh, myself and Chief English worked a lot together. Um, and that's exactly what I'm looking at. But I don't want to just be on the phone. I want to, I want that. I want the, them to be able to see each other. Uh, that's all that virtual. I, I want to log on. They can go to a website and they open up and there's a living, breathing body there that they can like that interaction we're having here. But I need to see them. Uh, and they see me, or at least they see me. That I just think that matters, right? Um, so um, anyway, I'm looking to hopefully start that in December uh, as we look at some alternative ways to address. Um, issues in our city and, and taking advantage of using technology. So I certainly will. Um, thank you for your kind words, uh, uh, Ms. Spratley. I appreciate it. Kind words definitely encourage me to keep. Ms. Spratley, you're doing God's work, and I greatly appreciate all that you do for this community, uh, for this department. Um, I appreciate your heart and your compassion. I appreciate your prayers, and I uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow at, at our memorial service. And I just really, really uh, appreciate that. And it's okay. It's all right. I, I get teased a little bit about it, but it, it is diet. And uh, I, you know, I'm getting I'm getting older now, so I can I can I can be open and honest, right? And be transparent. Um, uh, Mr. Ranks, thank you for the invite. I'll be at work where you guys come to. Do your yes, absolutely, in Hampton. But I'll definitely reach out, Van Buster. Thank you for your time this evening, Miss Ranger. Uh, my heart goes out to you. Um, please know we love you. Um, you're part of our family. And um, I, again, I'm so sorry for your loss, but you matter to me. You matter to this department. And I, I just thank you for your time tonight. And thank you again for where you work and what you do. That's important. Uh, so we talked about domestic violence. We talked about uh, our memorial service. We talked about breast cancer awareness. We're at, what is it, 641? Am I reading that right? Um, so uh, where we're at, I've got a 17... Uh, Academy class, 17 member of new recruits that will graduate the day before Thanksgiving. We have a class right behind that, 14 officers, recruits, that will graduate um, sometime beginning the second quarter of next year. And we're recruiting now for the class uh, in December or if I get some pushback in the first week of January, but we'll see. Maybe we'll start on December 31st. Um, but that, that class, we're looking to fill all the vacancies that we have. Um, 
uh, other things we've got going on, uh, we talked about domestic violence, uh, we talked about our social workers we have on board, we talked about um, uh, CARES unit and response, how it's, how it's cut down, um, officers going to some of those calls and we're allowed to have uh, health professionals and, and medics respond, paramedicine uh, respond, fire department's a great partnership, clinicians, it's just really, really great. Is the Marcus Alert is the alert system for the state, so we try to find out how the best way to respond to mental illness calls or people who have uh, the non-violent, right, that are, are having some mental illness crisis, whether it's depression, uh, uh, loneliness, uh, uh, feelings of suicidal, uh, those type things. Yeah, it, it has just been a tremendous benefit, and it's trying to work smarter, right, doing what's best for our community. And like I said, I'm going to say it a couple more times. We don't always get it right. We don't have all the answers, but we're trying, right? We're not sitting on the sidelines. We should be doing this. They should be doing that. It's what do we do better. How do we do this better? And that's important to me. So that's why I think that comes back to why we sit down and have conversations and communicate. And uh, communication is so much better than confrontation. Talk about different ideas. Here's some things we can do. Here's some things we can't. Being open. I can't do that now, but it's something I'd like to do in the future. You know, it's a, it's a money issue. It's a manpower issue. Um, the laws don't allow us to do those kind of things. Um, and just having a conversation, I think, goes a long way. And, and I think it helps build trust. Um, we can sit down and reason together. Um, Eric, what is the law on underglow? What is the law on underglow lights on cars and trucks? Um, Eric, gosh, I don't want to tell you wrong, man. You ask me a big old traffic question. Um, I, I I don't know the an I know at one time they were illegal. Um, you know now I, I think it goes along. It can't be distracting. It can't you know flat on off. But I don't want I don't want to tell you wrong. I will I'll get the answer for you. Uh, we have got some individuals in this department who like memorize the code book. I mean, they can recite it. If they were sitting here, they'd tell you the paragraph and the page number. Um, uh, Sergeant Flair is one of the better ones. I'll reach out to him and get, a, get an answer for you. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I see some cars got like blue or purple on the baseline, some things under the car. So I will find out. I will find out. Um, Miss Spratley, yeah, oh, well, I look, I hope everything's okay. I'll tell you what. On the way to the doctor's appointment at 11 o'clock, Miss Bradley, drive by the church at 10 o'clock and just wait. And I'll just know you were there. Now, I hope, hope everything okay, goes okay with the doctor's appointment. But um, no, I totally understand. I, I appreciate you. Uh, okay, Clue, you must be exhausted. What, what do you do for fun? Wait, what? Oh my. Must be exhausted like tonight? Being here at 6.45, hanging out? What do I do for fun? Uh, now, I'll tell you, yeah, I, I get tired. I'm feeling pretty good today. We had a good session today. It was long. Uh, I did an interview with the mayor and a roundtable discussion there with some youth and Rashad Wright, uh, Dr. Mason from Warwick. Um, and we uh, got to come back here and uh, we had, had a couple meetings with the assistant chiefs as we look at structure and initiative. I met with the uh, PIO staff here at Media Relations, uh, make sure we were all straight. Uh, I got to give uh, Kelly and Sarah and Julie and Maynard a hard time making sure we're good for tomorrow. Um, I think we did an interview uh, earlier today about domestic violence with one of our news outlets. Uh, I got to meet with our dispatchers. They were having their um, supervisor retreat today, uh, going through policies and procedures. So I went down with Chief Creswell and had some interaction with them. There were some officials from the mall about some concerns that they have coming up in the holiday season. So we'll make sure that our mall is safe, right? People out shopping. And um, then I met with, uh, I have uh, several committees that I meet with, right? First line sergeants, I meet with a group of lieutenants, and then I meet with, meet with a group of, of civilians and officers where they just get a chance to kind of ask me, Chief, what are we doing with this? What are we doing with that? How do we feel about this? What's next? Um, so we just had some, some, a group discussion. There was about 15, I guess, all together. Uh, so we met and, and we just had a good conversation. So after that was finished, I picked up a little uh, beverage and I came down here to spend um, some time with our community, with you all. And, and th this is the part I really, really enjoy. Uh, good conversations and you guys have asked some really good questions. So you say, what do you do for fun? I enjoy watching football, but I'm a baseball fan at heart. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, so I'm watching the baseball playoffs now. Every game matters, right? And I don't want to see any posts about Boston and in uh, Atlanta and, and in Los Angeles. So the Cincinnati Reds are out. If the city manager was here, Miss Cindy Ross, she'd be jabbing me about the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So, uh, but I enjoy sporting events. Uh, I like to read and uh, I think. Right? So sometimes I just go for long walks and just think, what have I, what can I do better? How do we improve? Um, so those type of things. Um, gosh, I don't know how we got on that. Who, a who asked me that question? Katie. Katie. I'm going to have to send Katie something back. She's busy. She's <laughs> me off. Um, Eric, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, Keith, used to be the car could be equipped. Look, Keith up there. Up there in the Ashland area. Used to be in the car could equipped with those lights, but they could not be on when driving on the roadway. They could be on in the parking lot the car shows, but had to be turned off when driving on the road. But that was more than a few years ago. The law could have changed. Yeah, so Keith, my friend, that's what I was saying. I'm not sure, and from what I'm reading, you're not either, right? You're killing me, Keith. I don't, I don't, no, I don't know. But Eric, I will get, I will guarantee you. I could call Sergeant Fuller. I could put him on speakerphone right now. He could probably tell you the page number uh, of that that question is only probably send me two or three pictures um, to address it. Um, but he's a, he's just a wealth of knowledge of traffic. Uh, but I'll get it. And you know what, Keith? When I get, I'm going to send it to you too, my friend. So we all know what it is. I just, I don't know. I know there's been some tweaks in it, uh, but I, don't, I just don't know exactly what the are. So what is the law? Okay, so he was responding. Gotcha. Um, yeah. All right. So we talked about the crew class. Um, uh, as we go go to uh, move through, right? It's Halloween time. We start getting into. Uh, kids are going to be out uh, trick or treating and doing some events. So I ask people, please be careful going back to the speeding and, and some of our neighborhoods where we know we're going to have kids out. Please, please, please be careful. Look out for one another. Uh, and then we're going to be moving them right into, gosh, it's almost Thanksgiving. I don't know what happened. Where did the summer go? Um, we move into Thanksgiving and then Christmas is right around the corner. And then we'll be at New Year's and, and, and st starting the year off. So, what we'll be doing here. Um, uh, we're going through about a $1.8 million switchover in our records management RMS system. Um, somebody had asked earlier this afternoon, uh, why haven't we seen some of the crime numbers online? It's because we, I haven't got them. We're about 85% there, but some of the sequences, some of the coding hasn't switched over yet, and I don't want to put out bad information. Uh, so they're trying to get that fixed. There's a group working uh, every day. They meet upstairs and go through. Are these the ones that this, we got to make sure this talks to this? as a new software in the upgrade. So we were a little behind on that, but we did spend uh, almost $2 million to get that addressed. Um, a real-time crime center, I'm going to do a whole story on that with the media here in a couple weeks uh, as we, we try to do things a little smarter. I think that's going to be a game changer for us. Uh, we are investing heavily, heavily, heavily in technology. Um, and then again, I, I should have uh, put this out earlier, we're hiring. We have vacancies in the police department, and we would love for you to come be a part of our organization to come into, into this field. This is a great opportunity to serve other people, right? It is a great opportunity to serve other people. We have a vast number of divisions. I want to be clear, we've lost some people that <laughs> thought it was Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. We lost some people that I didn't want to work weekends. I didn't know I might have to stay over. Those things happen. That's why I, I, I am so impressed by men and women who join this profession, because it is challenging and it is demanding, but it's also extremely rewarding. Now, you're not going to be millionaires. You're not going to be millionaires. But I don't know how you put a value on helping some person. How you see some people going through the worst times, crisis in their life, and you're able to help them. That's priceless. So join us, right? Be, be part of the difference. Help us get even better, right? And, and, and things you would like to see. You know, there's a lot of people that can stand on the sidelines and tell us and go on Facebook and social media. You may know some. It will tell us everything wrong in policing. But I watch things happen. What I'm, what I'm asking is come join us and help us be better. Help us to be part of the change, right? Be part of the difference to, work, that, uh, to help serve our community better. Um, I don't have any problem with people that, that want to meet and talk about things that can be better. But um, for those that just criticize, 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 that, that everything we do is wrong, um, I can tell you. I think last year we responded to about 160,000 calls for service. 160,000 times citizens ask us to come help them or to get involved in the situation. 160,000 times. Out of that, 82, 84, 86 complaints. That's like, point, for the math people, that's like point zero 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 six seven five two something like that. That's crazy. 
Now, what do we do? We don't say, oh, you know what, that's all right. No, we look at those those 86, and how do we do better? Because the year before, the complaints were 106. So we dropped 20 complaints. How do we continue to do better? There's still 86 times that the citizens were not happy with our interaction. But what we don't talk about are the 159,934 times we got it right. That citizens appreciated what we did. And, and that, that's the part that concerns me a little bit. We don't, we only, you can't just focus on the negative. We've got to look at law enforcement as a whole. I'm admitting to you that we don't always get it right, that we should do better, we should try to do better. But what would we be like if we didn't have law enforcement today? That's all I'm saying. Just think about that for a minute. And the same people that get frustrated with us, when they dial 911, I promise you will come. You will be there. That, to me, that is a heroic profession. Not everybody can do that. When I lose people out of the academy because it, things move too fast, uh, this, I'm seeing things I don't want to see, um, I don't think I can do this profession. And I understand. No, I understand. It is not for everyone. It is challenging. But I promise you, it is so rewarding. I mean, if you talk to officers who've been doing this, some as old as me and may have a little more hair, um, you ask them, they're not going to tell you about the number of arrests they made. They're not going to tell you how many guns they recovered, how much drugs they seized, how many arrests they made. They're going to tell you specific stories of how they help people. Uh, there, there was this young man, who, uh, there was a lady, who, uh, this mother her, her had Alzheimer's. That's what they're going to talk to you about. That's what they're going to talk to you about. And that, 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 that's huge. How making that impact on someone's life. So when we talk about this police memorial tomorrow, uh, I'm sure that I will get choked up at some point because I know what these officers go through. I understand the climate right now and how law enforcement is scrutinized. Well, I'm not running away from that. But there's still people who come to work and try to do the best they can to serve the citizens of this community. And that matters to me. And those individuals who gave their life to try to make things better. Uh, where do I leave off that? Um, David. Brazier, Dave. <laughs> Dave, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, Brazier at 4-2, to the bottom of the fourth. Uh, I'm shocked. I thought the Dodgers would win that series in five. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Atlanta. Um, a friend of mine, Pastor Maxwell, is a big uh, Atlanta fan, so I'm, I'm going to be hearing it from him, I'm sure. Uh, shouldn't the sergeant be watching you live right now? Sergeant Flero, no. He's probably home reading his uh, traffic code book right now, <laughs> right? He's on chapter, uh, page 587. He's reading it. That's, that's what he's doing now. So he'll, now he's going to call and text him and give me a hard time, but yeah, he's probably home reading it right now. Uh, come see a U, uh, UVA football game. Okay, I might have to fight uh, Chief Kresel. He's a big UVA fan, uh, so we go back and forth a little bit. Can't, imi can't imagine life without law enforcement. Thank you. Uh, Katie, thank you all. That means a lot. Thank you. Charlie, soccer game. My team is ready. So let's talk about that for a minute. A friend of mine uh, was injured last year. I won't go too much into that. But a, a young man uh, was injured, and he was a big soccer player. And he, he's recovering, and um, he's had a lot of treatments, and he's back playing soccer. And so you know, I always wanted to do it in person, but I haven't been able to get out there. I did go to get to see uh, Charlie and his team play. But I will tell you, um, we talked a little bit. I uh, got to see him when he got home from some treatment. In fact, I don't know if he remembers, but I gave him the badge that I had on my shirt. And um, so, Charlie, I'm challenging you and your team to a soccer match against the Newport News Police Department. That means put on your shin guards, lace them up. I will get Chief Grinstead out there. I don't know what he'll do. Maybe the goalie. I, I don't know. And I will figure out the rules of soccer, but I'm telling you, Charlie, to you and your team, and I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's, what, 11, 12, or 13-year-olds are coming for you. Um, they're coming for you. So I hope you're ready. Lace them up. Dust your, your cleats off. But I look forward. So, uh, Mr. Foley, we will sit down. Maybe we can talk at uh, the end of this week and, and get a, uh, uh, a game together and get the set. Uh, but I look forward to it. We'll have some fun. Um, but yeah, Charlie's my buddy. I went on a community walk in the summer, and I got to walk with Charlie just around the, the block. We had a really good conversation, and uh, it's a good community, good team, and uh, I, look, I look forward to it. Chief Grant said, "I'll be like, what are you talking about? I'm not going out there and play soccer." Yeah, it, it, yeah. 
But if we can play kickball and, and softball, we can get it on off soccer field. Annie, it's so sad that you'll never really hear about the bad stuff about the start. But it's, wait a minute. It is so sad that all you're about these and not ever about the good stuff. But I hope in your hearts know that we do see all that you do in our community. Annie, thank you. Uh, I'm a Yankee fan. But, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Ed threw the Yankee. So your first post, uh, Annie, thank you. And, and I, I want to I be honest. We do not always get it right. We make mistakes. And I will tell you, this department has made them. And I think we have to be open and transparent, admit that, and try to do better and apologize. I wish we could turn back the clock on a couple of events that we've had in our city. Um, but I can't do that. All I can do is make the commitment to try to do better, to hold ourselves accountable, improve on mistakes, make changes when needed. There's a lot of people who sit on the outside and can give all the recommendations. But Come here and work with us. Come here and get in the car and ride along with us. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Right? But I appreciate that. Braves and Red Sox fan here. I both make it to the series. I'll be in heaven. <laughs> there you go, Keith. <laughs> Andy, Chief, being a Yankee fan, I really don't follow the Red Sox, but three back-to-back -back grand slams in the other night. That's what I'm talking about. And I saw that, too. Uh, we were actually talking about it when I got in this morning. Um, you know, so, look, we've had, we've had some fun. Uh, Yankees will get them next year. <laughs> this the Yankees will get them. All right, Joanna, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. They, I will guarantee you this. They will spend more money next year than they did this year. Right? You can't buy that. You can't buy that trophy. you got to earn it. Um, we had, we've had some, some laughs, and we had some really good conversations tonight. I, I appreciate everyone who took time to spend with me. I hope I didn't pull you away. I know that um, you know life moves so fast, and we're doing so many things now. And, school back in and, and all that, but for those that took the time uh, to chat with me a little bit, to listen to me, um, tease me, and talk about um, some really serious topics and, and then have some fun, that means the world to me. Um, whether you're able to watch the whole the whole interaction or you watch it later in segments, um, uh, it just means, it means a lot, and, and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I do hope that some of you are able to come by on memorial service tomorrow. Like I said, it's going to be at 10 o'clock in the 15,000 block of, of Ward Boulevard at Calvary Chapel. Uh, Pastor Tony is a very excellent speaker. He, he speaks from the heart. Uh, I doubt very seriously he has anything written down. I think he will speak from the heart. Um, but we do have a surprise that um, I hope people will get to come out and see. It will be very touching, uh, especially just coming back from Washington and, and the memorial. We'll talk a little bit about that more tomorrow. Um, but I'm excited. I look forward to it. It is a respect uh, for those that, that died. They gave their lives trying to help other people. And that's important. That's important. As Dr. Lyon said, no greater gift. Right? Um, so, so I encourage uh, all of you to, to join us tomorrow. I hope we get to see you. Um, let me take a minute here and, and just thank the men and women who do this job. I know that while we're talking here, there's officers on the street. And when we go to sleep tonight, 2, 3 in the morning, officers will be patrolling our neighborhoods, responding to calls and situations. You know, nobody knows what tomorrow holds. Um, so the men and women who work here, sworn and civilian, whether you're in records or in dispatch, uh, the domestic violence team calling victims, the social workers that are here responding, Carriage unit out there dealing with individuals in crisis situations. Again, our dispatchers, and, and you know, they can't see what's going on. They just hear that uh, information come in through their ears and, and try to put it out to officers and uh, our media relations side of the house and, and those who even keep this building and our buildings and facilities clean. Those who take care of our vehicles that we drive. I appreciate you. It matters. We can make things better. We just have to be able to sit down and work together. And sometimes I understand things are tense and stressful. Um, circle back around and, you know what, we had to respond and we'll do the best we can. But I think that's, that's, that's to me, the recipe as we move forward. We take care of each other. Um, that matters. It makes a difference. Um, and thank you, Chief. Um, and thank you. I appreciate that. Terry, thank you very much. Hope to see you tomorrow uh, uh, as well at a memorial. Tina, um, and Tina, I appreciate that. Thank you. Please be safe. I have held you up and bothered you enough tonight. Hope everybody has a good dinner. Enjoy some baseball. And uh, again, hope to see you tomorrow. Um, 
Thank you all for spending time with me. God bless, and we'll do this again next month. Take care.